Hello and welcome back to Adventure's Way. I'm Diana. And I'm Matt. And today we are milling a huge log. This will be our first big pine log that we're going to mill. Yeah, I've just measured it. It's 24 inches in diameter and it's about, what, nine foot long, just under yeah. nine foot long. And, uh, and it is it completely maxed out the tractor. Like I could barely move that thing. Uh, the only way I could lift it on the forks was when it was right against the guard. If it was anywhere near the tips, the tractor couldn't do it. So took it real slow, real steady, but we've got it onto the mill. The log does have a load of damage at this end. So at the, the thinner end, the wood is all kind of blown out on the far side. And that's because this is one of the logs from one of the pine trees that was tipped over with the excavator mm -hmm. and it tends to tear out quite a lot. That said, we should still get some really nice boards out of here. And, and what are we doing? So uh, the boards we're going to cut out of here today are going to be boards for our solar kiln. So we've done a design for that based on the Virginia Tech design and we're going to frame it ourselves using our own lumber Green from lumber. this log. Yeah, so two by fours. Two by fours is the goal for today, yeah. Great, let's go do this. Okay, so you've just seen us make our first two cuts on the log, uh, and that's because we learned something after the first cut. We had really, really tight clearance onto the uh, the side, kind of the, the saw head, and so we actually had to uh, chip a couple of bits of bark off at the end so the saw head could actually slide past. So although we got a good clean first cut, the reality was that the we couldn't go down any further. We couldn't drop down because the log gets wider, and so we couldn't do any more cuts that way. So we sort of had this choice. Do we just stick with that first cut and then try and turn it or take a little bit more off and then when it's a little bit narrower, turn it and that way we've got more chance of getting through in the future. So that's what we did. We, we actually turned the log just a little bit so it was just slightly off straight. And we did that by lowering the log stops on the far side. So these were pressed up against the widest part of the log, which meant the log wasn't really sitting central within the, the track. By lowering them, we were able to slide the log over or actually turn it just a, a few inches over and we made a second cut. So we did waste a little bit of the pine there, which is a shame, um, but I'm sure we'll find use for that somewhere. However, we've now done this second cut and this is kind of on its widest dimension. So we're now gonna try and turn this log, which isn't gonna be trivial. We're probably gonna use the tractor for this. And, uh, and then once we've turned it, as long as we can get it perfectly straight up, we can then start slicing down our, our pieces. Uh, I was just going to use the forks and just pull it slightly this way. Okay. And then once it's away, raise the logs up, up as high as they'll go. Yeah. And then I'll just try and use the forks on this front edge just to kind of turn it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let me just push the log because it's not touching the front of them. Okay. And that 
should clear all the way down with the exception of this little bit, which I can just chainsaw off if I need to. Yeah. So if we just start cutting down now, mm -hmm. we'll just get a load of, of boards, two inch boards. Yeah. And then we can flip those up on the side uh -huh. and turn them into two by fours. Yeah. So I think we just, on this log, to keep it simple. And just two, two inch. Two inches all the way down. It's gonna be heavy. Yeah, and we'll just load them onto the tractor forks. Uh huh. And then after that. Well, in fact, we can leave them on here. No, it's gonna be very, very hard to saw. All that weight on top of the saw, it's gonna be very hard. That's what I've seen people do. I mean, I barely could push through with the when we did the one bias. Okay. So should we just skim? The but plus, thinnest? like, we're still not gonna be able to turn them around when yeah, it's so all slabbed. Let's just skim the thinnest layer we can off this one. Yeah. See where we're at. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. This log was barely too large for our sawmill. We actually thought we were gonna get away with it. It looked like it was just going to fit, but when we started running the saw head down, we ran into a couple of areas where the bark was just protruding a little bit too wide and we couldn't get the saw head past. Fortunately, we were just able to chip those areas off. It was mainly some bark, uh, so we were able to use a small hatchet and just kind of knock those areas down and get the saw head past. Especially as we got to the widest point of the log, uh, we found a few more areas where that was the case, but we just took it slow. When we saw that the saw head was going to hit something, we stopped, used the hatchet just to remove those areas, and were then able to continue. And soon enough, we were able to get through all the layers, and we had our two-inch slabs. Here's a good example of something that we've learned through experience. As we started cutting this log down, we realized that the flat edge was on the side furthest away from the log stops. In other words, we were going to be putting it against log stops with a very uneven edge if we kept it the way it was. So we decided to turn it around 180 degrees, which fortunately wasn't too hard. It was fairly lightweight at this point. That gave us a nice vertical edge to put against the log stops and make sure it's going to be clamped securely in place as we ran the couple of boards off from this side. Since we were cutting with the bark on the top side again, the kind of the unfinished side on the top, it meant that we were trying to aim for that bottom board to be a full two inch slab. So we've been trying a number of different ways to try and calibrate that so that we get the bottom slab perfectly two inches and anything that's kind of over or under that amount is gonna come off the top where it's wastage anyway on the bark. We're getting pretty good at this. Uh, it's slow, we're not perfect by any means yet, but we are learning and so far it seems to be working. We can then turn all these slabs around, bring the tractor in and load the, the ones from the tractor as well. We actually had too many slabs here for it to fit uh, horizontally across, so we split the batch into two, doing some slabs vertically first, and then we'll go back and do the rest. The plan here again is we wanna make sure that these, we're trying to cut two by fours, so we wanna make sure that bottom cut is exactly four inches, so we calibrate from there. To do this, we made a little story stick that gives us our four inch increments, accounting for the blade kerf. Then we can raise it up to the right, uh, the right height and cut from the top down to make sure that we're finishing with good four inch thick boards. It's so satisfying as you start cutting down and the pieces go from being rough edged pieces of a tree into actual two by fours with smooth four sides. It's really, really nice. So here we're laying out where we want to stack the boards. It's really important that the boards are stacked carefully. We milled our cants and our stickers to let us do this. We're gonna use the base of the solar kiln that we've been building. Since we're not expecting to frame it this year, we ran out of time, it was getting too cold and we were gonna be heading south uh, fairly soon. So we decided to use this perfectly flat base we'd built as the perfect place to store all of our milled lumber. We start by laying out these cants. These are four inch by four inch cants, four feet long that we had milled a few days before. We lay these out. We probably could have just put stickers straight onto the, onto the solar kiln surface, but we decided to raise everything up onto these cants, A, since we had them, and B, just to give a little bit more airflow underneath. We then put our stickers on top of that. These are the, uh, the one by one, one inch by one inch pieces that we'd cut, again, four feet long. We put one of these on each uh, cant, and then began to stack our two by fours perpendicular to these leaving about an inch or so of space between each of the two by fours. We tried to do this really, really neatly. 
not just to appease our OCD tendencies, but also because if you can get them so that the stickers are perfectly aligned one above the other, it'll help to stop the boards becoming wavy. If your stickers are offset, you can imagine how the, the, the gravity and, and the downward force is actually being applied unevenly across the boards. This way, it's all transferred in a straight vertical line all the way down to those cants at the bottom. Here you can see us milling the next set of slabs that we've taken off. This is just the second set. Again, trying to adjust everything, and we had a bit of a victory here. Diana managed to uh, start the engine for the first time, had been really struggling with that, uh, that recoil, that pull start, uh, but managed to get it going, which was awesome. We found that it really helps to keep the tractor parked alongside the mill as we're using it and that way at the end of each cut we can just lift off the slabs or in this case the boards and lay them down on the tractor forks making them much easier to move over to our stacking area even though it is just about 30 feet away it's easier to carry these with a the tractor than carrying them all by hand. So we got this moisture meter that has uh, measuring pins and uh, we haven't really used it. So I want to check how fast do these stickers dry. So the bottom two layers, we milled them and put them here two days ago, right? Is that true? Two uh, days ago? A few days ago, yeah. Two days ago. Uh, so let me measure the bottom one. And this is the shade side, not the southern side with exposure. So the bottom one, is 16.2 percent. The new ones that we milled today, uh, the top one is 20.4 percent. Here I'm checking the moisture level two days later and then so this is again the same place where I'm taking the measurement on the shade side. Um, the bottom sticker is 14.1 and the fourth layer, now two days after milling, is 16.7%. Okay, so this third one in is probably the hardwood, and it is heavier than the other ones. Yeah. Moisture meter says 26.8%. Okay. And then I think these were light. Yeah, yeah. This, this one's light. And the light ones, moisture meter says 23.4 Well, today has been very awesome. We managed to uh, saw our first big pine log and we got 24 really good nine foot long two by fours. Yeah, so we've cut all the logs to six to 12 inches longer than the actual like standard board. So an eight foot board that we're trying to get we've cut logs like eight foot six to nine foot somewhere in that region yeah so we're just keeping them full length and that way if they do crack at the ends we've got a few inches we can cut off without losing anything it has been so much fun yeah honestly putting that big log on there and turning it into this stack of two by fours is so cool yeah and uh you know obviously the first time it went a little bit slower we were figuring some things out like which order to do the slabs and how to cut it yeah. also um the scale uh accounts for curve either for one inch boards or two inch boards, but we were cutting two by fours. So we kind of made our own story stick to make sure that when we start at the top, there is exact amount of um, two by fours vertically yeah. down to the bottom. Yeah, and so really, like, like you said, this is a kind of a practice run in some regards for yeah. us, but we've got 24 awesome two by fours yeah. uh, out of that log. Yeah. 